Hello. Um, what I'm going to do today here is just do some. I don't know. I'm going to animate something really simple and talk about what I'm doing as I do it. And if that's interesting to someone, then a great victory will have been achieved. So, yeah. The last time I did a tutorial thing was, I think, literally years ago. And um, it was like a full character rig. I think it was the Pyro from TF2. I wanted to do something really simple. Um, just get back into the swing of making videos, I guess. So what we're doing today is really, really, really uh, stripping things down. So I've got uh, a little scene here. And there's, let's make this character blue. Okay, so I've made like a little rectangle and I've put his pivot at the bottom. And the thing I'm trying to get across with this basically is you have all this abstraction in animation of like a skeleton and it's this character and he has a thousand bones and physics and cloth, you know, simulations. You kind of can get lost in that stuff and when people are going crazy about like the appeal of a pose and, and you know, all this stuff that happens, um, that's kind of illustration in a way. Like pure animation you can kind of get across all of the intent with two polygons. And that's what I'm going to kind of get across today. So I'm going to do an action here where the character just jumps. And we're going to see how evocative and how uh, characterful we can make that just with a cube or with a rectangle. So first things first, we're going to think about how we split this action into three parts, uh, which is anticipation, and then the actual motion, whatever it is, and then the follow through, um, or the reaction. And everything is just physics. When you're animating things, there's you know muscles are pulling the body in a certain way, and that's reacting versus uh, you know is there solid stuff in the way, or is there gravity acting on the person, or you know does a different object come from the opposite direction and smash into them? It's all just physics, um, and we're basically going to kind of go through that. Another thing that's interesting is, uh, well, let's do this first of all, let's just do the anticipation. So let's uh, think about the rhythm we want. I'm going to make him jump on the spot. Um, you know, you could think about things in terms of frames and timing. I just kind of like to animate thinking of a like a little sound effect in my head. So if I'm playing through the timeline, I'm just kind of thinking it's going build up, then doof, doof, doof. So I think probably 28 frames I reckon is when I'll do it. Um, so if I pull him down here and I just do a, a scale of one axis, that's pretty weird. Um, you lose all the volume of a character and it looks like he's shrinking or uh, you know that the top half is disappearing or something weird. Um, and this is where the principle of squash and stretch becomes really important. Uh, if you scale something on both axes uh, in the opposite direction, you preserve all the volume, right? This character here is made of the same number of pixels as this character here. Um, and uh, basically that helps you keep up the illusion of, you know, the, the character is made up of stuff, it's a full volumetric thing, rather than it's a shell of polygons with nothing inside. And that applies even, you know, with little box character. Um, so we want to have him crouch down. He's going to get prepared for his jump. And the thing about this is, even with a little box, um, you know, you can kind of imagine this basically applying applying to anything really. I mean, if your character was a full 3D rig with arms and legs and things, all that this squash here would represent is well, his legs um, are crouched down. Maybe he spread his arms out and he's curled his spine so that his uh, his back is, is lower to the ground and this kind of thing. Uh, but what we have right now here, this is really boring, isn't it? This is like, there's not really anything particularly evocative or interesting about this. And if you look at the curve, you know, it's obvious why. It's just, it's going from A to B, there's a little bit of a slow in and a little bit of a slow out. So, how do you make stuff like this more interesting? Well, the thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to basically do a vibration, a 
little scale shake on two axes as he crouches down and we're going to have it so that he's at his bottom shape for a little while and it's just kind of all coming to a head. Now if you watch that we've now got something that's implying a bunch of different stuff. Um, the shake is giving the impression A that uh, it's kind of difficult you know it doesn't feel like a smooth easy motion um, and uh, there's a there's a kind of kinetic energy implied in a vibration like this where you kind of you see this this first second of animation and the implication of it is where's all that energy gonna go um, now as he's done this uh, we'll key on all of our axes so we've got everything sorted there we know what we're doing and then we do another big principle of animation which is contrast so over one frame for the jump we pull them all the way up here now that's a way bigger change of um, of the drawing than we've had previously right that's a really big deal and it does a few things um, you know the main one being it shows that something has changed you know in the forces acting on the character um, and it also is a signpost for the person to pay attention. It's saying this is an important thing that just happened. You know, keep your eyes on this object. Keep your eyes on this character. Um, so we have him go upwards. He's got all his volume still, but now it's going in a completely different direction. And we have the implication of there is now a force that has been acting downwards this whole time. There's now a force that is acting upwards really powerfully. We're taking all of that energy, and pushing it upwards. So. We have this, and now we're just going to quickly do um, the jump. Like, I personally, for this kind of thing, like to animate on twos and just go straight ahead. You know, you can do this exact same thing with uh, just editing curves, but uh, I just find you th the more removed you get from this scene from where you're just like I'm grabbing stuff, I'm moving objects around, I'm keying I don't know, to me this is how you produce like animation that feels like it naturally flows from one thing to the next I, I don't really personally love to do lots of pose to pose blocking out of stuff um, and if you think that sucks then you probably don't like my work so sorry um, so anyway we're gonna have this, and uh, we've got a little bit of a, an idea of this jump, and it feels like something's happening. Um, you know, what can we look at this and say is interesting about it? Well, <coughs> you know, we're watching basically all of his energy be taken away by gravity, and that's the big thing to keep in mind of like that's what's happening. And again, like it does all come back down to physics. Um, one thing we're missing though is that he's keeping the same shape the whole time. So the implication here is he's stretched out, and if you had a 3D rig uh, of arms and legs, then now his legs would be stretched. Maybe his arms would be upwards, and his spine would be fully stretched, uh, you know, fully straight, and his head would be looking upwards, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and really, at the top of the jump, you want to imp um, imply that his pose has changed again. You know, maybe his legs are now a little bit more of a a relaxed position and he spread his arms out and he's looking down now in anticipation of falling so we're going to pull him not to like a squash position but to like a kind of neutral how he was position but then as he's coming back towards the ground we're going to stretch him out again because now his you know his feet would be coming back down to anticipate the thing and he's kind of bracing himself for impact um, and you get a little bit more character doing that. Boom, boom. So I'm going to drag that a little bit over here. So it's more... I want this fall to be quicker actually. So I'm just going to pull some keys. There we go. Um, okay. Now again, this is, once again, we've got anticipation and then as we change state, big contrast, we have the actual action itself. And now we're going into the third and final state, the follow through. So we have another big set of contrast. So, once again, squash him down. And we show that all of this force, poof, of him falling down, is going to act upon him because he's hitting a completely solid surface. 
you know, we're saying this is immovable, and that's why when you watch the animation, it feels like this is the ground, this this is the immovable earth, because he doesn't act on it at all. If when he hit the ground, um, we then had animation on this thing, so that it went doof, and bounced, you know, boing, then suddenly you're implying something completely different. You're saying, oh wow, is this like, um, you know, a mattress or the waves of the sea or fucking a springboard or a trampoline, you know? Um, but we're going to imply this is solid ground, so we'll delete all this. And uh, <coughs> we'll just pull him back up real quick and then back down. I'm going to just drag in his actual neutral pose and then like this. How do we get there? Boing. Yeah, and there we go. Uh, we basically have a nice readable jump. So let's just watch the whole thing. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yeah, and so I'm going to try and do a bunch of these things talking about you know camera shakes and talking about um, you know how to pose a 3D hand in a way that looks nicely, uh, that looks nice, and how to do first-person animation and how to do um, complex physical interactions and all kinds of things. But what I want to try and kind of get across in these things and in this video is, you know, all of the stuff that applies to you're doing some crazy cutscene in a AAA game where fucking ten robots are fighting in a crazy battle it all kind of comes down to this stuff and all you're really doing is put a bunch of bells and whistles on it um, anyway I'll leave this as a real short video but uh, hope someone's watching and finding it vaguely interesting <laughs>